Okay, now we go to London's turn, as they're the first player here in Age of Renaissance, um, first turn of the game. They get to expand. Now, here's the thing. They don't actually get to play their expansion yet. This is where they really do their final planning. This is where they're purchasing or whatever, uh, different advances and stuff like that. They have to hold on to this. That's going to cost them a buck. So they actually have to do the planning for this as they're working. Um... Advances, well, they don't really want one, but what they do want is they want to buy a ship. Oh, no, no, do they? They have a ton of money. Why do they have so much money? Hmm. Okay, well, advances don't really help them. They need a ship because that's what they planned for when they bought the tokens that they did. So they're going to pay, and I believe it's ten bucks. Um to do a ship upgrade. And that gets them the first level of galley, which allows them to move two tokens up to two spaces. They'll pay that out, and you gotta watch because later on is when they actually get to do this. And now they have a few bucks left. They paid the one buck in for the uh, card stabilization, I believe. Let me check my money and make sure. Uh, See, I have them, they had 27 tokens, or 27 bucks, 13 tokens, and now I have 8 bucks. What's up? I must have screwed up something. They have the 13 tokens, I must not have, they should be getting, I don't know what they, I can't tell what I'm doing now. I shouldn't have 8 bucks here. I don't know. I miscounted, perhaps, but they should get these back, but they should have 10 bucks back. So this is what they should have at this point. Um, it's 16 bucks in their pocket, and they should also have the 13 tokens that they bought. And that'll be enough for them to expand 8, 9, 10, 11, and then two more. Oh, they can't get here. 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, one more that they could shift maybe down into Cornwall or something. Or alternatively, they could spend um, only 10 of their tokens, say 8, 9, 10, and buy another card for next turn. They didn't have to pay stabilization for. Uh, next up is going to be Hamburg. I'll uh, run through without all the thinking on all of them, and you'll see kind of well, I'll come back with whatever advances that we see. Well, Hamburg actually, I, sh I should lie to you because that's kind of my nature. Hamburg actually has something that they want to do that's a little different from what uh, London did. Now they have 12, 15 tokens and 25 bucks in cash. They don't have to pay for any cards. They used up all their cards, but they want to buy an advance. And they're going to spend 20 bucks for the caravan advance. And normally that would be marked off by circling it up here and you would mark everyone else, oh, sorry, I'm not sure you could see that, circling it up here. And then everyone else could mark it down in their kind of keeping track of each other's. Instead though, I keep track of everything on one sheet because I'm playing by myself. So I just bought Caravan. The effects of that are that I'm going to be able to spread out at a distance a little easier than other players are possibility I'm getting a package so I'm gonna have to pause here okay so finishing things up everybody paid hand stabilization that they were due Venice bought caravans as well that's part of their plan for the expansion they need to spread out a little bit more and they wanted to do it on land rather than by sea to begin with and that's generally the case with Venice uh, we see Barcelona Genoa both bought the level two, the first level of galleys. So did Paris. With their cut money, Paris was forced into not being able to buy the caravans that they wanted. There's nothing else they can buy for ten bucks. They had ten bucks extra. They couldn't expand everywhere they want to, so they had to buy boats, which isn't an optimal choice for them, but it will at least allow them to use their counters and to get their money out of the way. Usually, Paris uh, foregoes buying any galleys. I think. All right, well, now we're on to the expansion phase. And at this, oh, 
people could have, oh no, nobody could have bought Misery Relief um, because they don't have any advances. Um, for the expansion phase, we again follow the normal order. Let's take a look at England's expansion and see how this is going to work. England wants to grab their wall. They have a two galley, so they can go one, two up to here. Now, I have enough pieces that I can grab this Portsmouth grain, and I think I want to do that. Two, three, four, five. Now I have a few extra pieces. The furthest I can go is Cornwall or St. Malo, or I could drop over to Amsterdam. I can't get up to the islands up here. So I have kind of a hard job of getting to different places. I've got three tokens. I could I have the choice basically between a stone and grabbing another card. I'm gonna grab another card. I think three pop, three pips for a card is a good deal, and I'm not terribly impressed with my other options, especially with uh you know, stone just an extra stone doesn't impress me at all. And I got a, a card for stone. Well, that wasn't a good deal. All right. Well, that's the end of London's turn, and now I'd go on to Hamburg, and I'm going to spread out in the same way, but Hamburg has got a slight difference because they have the caravans, right? So, let's take a look at how they can expand. Now, they have no real goals. Uh, neither did London, for that matter. They have no cards that direct them to what they want, so they're going to have to play off of what they think is valuable here. And among other things, gold is valuable, and I can get their 1-2 to here. Um, you know what? I should do this with my London pieces. <clears throat> to indicate, yeah, these markets are happening. Um, that I've filled up the locations. And I should be doing the same here with Hamburg, uh, grabbing the gold like that. Let's see what else. I can't get up to Danzig yet. I could get to Stettin, but I don't know how much that really helps me. What I can do though, and notice there's no limit to how far, how many pieces I can transport with my caravans. And I'm going here for valuable locations. The only exception, I'm not taking Cologne's cloth. It's actually safe from Paris right now. And I want to get to Lubeck so that I can go to Danzig. Now, I could have instead played just one piece or one back here and expanded elsewhere. But right now, this is the best I can do, I think. And I grab some more cities which I will fill these in with. Notice everything's on its white side because it's not established yet. That's important for a reason I didn't even explain in the rules. One thing that happens here after the expansion, um, Okay, I do not see it. But one thing that happens is the person who gets the most new cities, new markets on the map, gets a bonus card at the uh, turn. I'm trying to find where that is. Expansion bonus, it's over here. Uh, not really tied in there, but it happens in the end of the expansion phase. It'd be nice if it was actually built into the... Uh, in, into the Played. Plaids are pretty useful for the most part, but they do have a couple little things that kind of negate what they do, uh, make them a little less effective. All right, so it's important to keep them face down the way they are, not only because Paris could conceivably walk through them if they had a caravan, and Venice certainly could if they were close enough, but um, because you want to have the most new, newly placed markets on any given turn to get a bonus. I'm going to have to take a break because I have to sort these counters into nice little neat piles or else my OCD is going to kill me on this. 
Barcelona had an interesting choice here. Now, for whatever reason, they thought with 16 tokens that they were, and other people had many fewer, they thought they were going to get away with being able to buy that first card, and they weren't. Um, with a boat in place instead of a caravan, and they had the cash, they could have bought a caravan, and they probably should have with the amount of tokens they bought. With a boat in place, they spread out as much as they could, and they're taking all these territories. Um, however, they still ended up with one piece that they couldn't play. Now, had they spread out where they wanted to, they wouldn't have put um, two pieces at Marseille, and they would have... Uh, I don't remember what else. But they weren't counting on... Um, Maybe they just made a mistake and they should have bought the caravan, to tell you the truth. Uh, but they weren't counting on what they, uh, what they actually ended up with. And that's the kind of mistake I always make in this game. It requires too much planning ahead of time. The thing gets possibly modified, and that's kind of cool. But then you gotta re you got to go through all that planning again. And in solitaire, it's really bad because I've got to put everybody out of mind because there's kind of this interweaving of turns. But even when I'm playing non in, in an opposed situation, I do all this figuring and then I forget what the hell I did, you know? <laughs> because the same kind of mindset that helps me play solitaire games, forgetting stuff easily, also helps me to be really, really bad at remembering what I need to do in a given game. Anyway, in this case, uh, they ended up spreading out everywhere. Had they had... Um, the option to buy the three-point card, they could have done that without any penalty. A six-point card seemed a little steep, and I'd rather spread out, get some of these uh, defensive locations. And it's really not too bad. I only wasted one piece. Of course, I've got a couple pieces here in Marseille that probably aren't going to do me a terrible lot of good because Genoa is going to likely attack them. But such is life, right? Okay, and Genoa, when they attack, will need... Five, well, they could move in here. They could move in here with up to three pieces without it being attack. Because then it's just the population limit. But if they want to attack, they have to put in enough to put a market, five pieces, plus enough to defeat that, the two additional pieces, to get the die roll for an attack. Uh, attacks, you can coexist safely at a cheap level. You can't take something. You can't drive someone away without going kind of all in on it. All right. Well, we're going to go to Venice. Venice also has a caravan, and they're planning on doing some spreading out. Let's we'll see what they do. Hey, let's take a moment and look at what Venice did. They spread out. Now, their goal here is the cloth. So they grabbed a couple of cloth. That gives them to three. If they turn their card in for that, that'll get them 45 bucks. That's a pretty good jump early in the game. They may want to play that just for that, but they did leave their options open by spreading into Rome with the idea of sailing down and maybe getting more cloth down here. Depends on what happens. They also were able to march through here and get a, a fur here. They got grain, timber. They've pretty much spread out and taken what they can in directions that they're interested in. I think Genoa is going to do them kind of a number here um, and maybe elsewhere, but we'll see how that uh, ends up panning out. But France, France, or Paris is kind of interesting here. Paris, remember, they have a boat, and they didn't get their caravan. They can't move where they want to to places like Lyon. So they spread to all the neighboring places, but now they're doing the first thing. They're attacking Hamburg here, and they have to put in three pieces to match the size of the area, and three pieces to match the token that Hamburg has. Now, their chance isn't terribly good. The colored die has to roll greater than a 5, or the black die has to be higher than the white die. But they need to do this. They need to try to expand, and this is the cheapest place that they can. The black die is not higher than the white die. The green die is not higher than their turn order. They lose these tokens. Hamburg's fine there. And now they've got four more to place without a really good place to put them. They can't sail four counters, say, I don't know, <laughs> into here if that were even useful, because they only have a two galley. 
they don't have a chance to draw a card because they need six cards to do that. They spent that already. They can't reach down here. So let's see what we can possibly do with these counters. One of them can come from here. One, two, with my two galley. And that's getting me kind of into the English area. Another one can do that up in Amsterdam and project some power there. I've still got a couple of tokens. I got nothing really to do with these. I'm gonna have to burn them. There's just no use, and I don't didn't have enough to make an additional attack. All right, uh, I'll leave them be for the moment. Well, I've got to position their cities, but we'll leave them be for just a moment here while we have our stirrup armed Genoans. And they have the advantage of adding uh, one to their competition totals, which means they need less units uh, to attack. That's kind of nice. And they're going to be going after stone. Ooh, <laughs> well, they might as well grab the stone. Nothing, nothing really to stop them there. They have boats, which isn't necessarily the best thing. They would have been better off with their uh, with caravans, but they didn't have enough cash for that. So we're going to see what we can do with stone. We'll grab the easy stuff, not just the stone. Um, I'm going to put at least one piece down in Naples to uh, to facilitate my expansion. I want this stone though. One, two, three, four. I don't need five. I would need one other here because of the stirrups. And now I roll. And I'm really looking for black die over white die. I don't even have to roll the green die. It can't win, right? No, I win attack ties. So black die tied black, white die or the green die can be equal to my turn order and I'll still win. So I do need it because of, and I got black die beats white die, so I defeated the Venetians there. And now I've got some more pieces. Hmm. Uh, I don't really want to hit this. That's just too expensive to do. I'm going to go after this wine here. That takes three five to get the market. It would take two because of my opponent, but I'll just put one in because um, I've got the stirrups. And here I lost. Black die didn't tie white, green didn't do this. So a lot of tokens of mine go into the dead pile. And I still have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's enough to do it once more. The question here is, is a card better than a territory? I find a territory is better because it'll give me more money as well as the possibility of a production base. However, the card was guaranteed. Now, here I managed to get away and I send Barcelona back there. I'll tie up uh, the pieces and come back in a moment. But Genoa is done, and they were the last of the players. 